Welcome back everyone to episode 3 of us playing Equestria at War. I'm your host, Mr. Mogul Lover. As we are, well, now I'm going to read about feeling overwhelmed with Autumn Blaze. I left Vermilion a few weeks ago to go visit the new steelworks that have been erected in Fragrance and Rhapsody, and argued for and funded in large part by Fickle Current and his like-minded business partners. I've traveled a little bit around the realm as part of the job, and even a little bit before that, when the silence still had people locked in his grasp, but I've never been this far north. I thought all of our realm was like Vermilion or Massacop, either withering cities dwindling as they decayed, or small villages full of Kirim trying to scratch out simple lives with no support, or assistance from the government, but Fragrance and Rhapsody are nothing like that. They're still splendid cities, places that tried so very hard to resist the economic and societal collapses of the science, and managed to save some of our culture, and we have life from before the science brought everything to a standstill. I don't know how I could better describe it. The Kirin in these cities still have life and color in them, and a sense of optimism that tomorrow's going to be a better day. That's something I share with them, and it made me oh so happy to see it during my travels. Oh, shoot. I'm getting off topic, aren't I? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, as it still works, the Fickle Kirin's clique funded are an amazing sight to behold. These aren't just workshops where blacksmiths forge steel and work their craft. This is something else entirely. A modern revolution that was <clears throat> uh, smothered in Kyria a century ago. Uh... But it's refined and perfected by the Griffins of Griffonia and the Ponies of Equus. Uh, there, are, there are entire factories filled with heavy machinery powered by electricity, and they're invented from over the seas. Uh, it makes me realize just how small my world was growing up in the silence, and guided along by workers who pull levers, hit buns, and somehow wrangle these machines into doing all the work for them, and the results can't even be compared to the work of the smithy workshops and guilds. These factories can produce in a day what an entire guild of talented blacksmiths can produce in a year. Sure, it loses some of that personal touch, but when we're trying to drag an entire nation into the modern era after a century of sitting on our hooves, <clears throat> his industrialization is practically a blessing sent by Concord herself. Kurt and his friends might be a little too cynical and greedy for my taste, but the inventions they're bringing in from overseas, uh, and the capital they're investing in setting up our industry, more than make up for it. I can only hope that some of the fruits of their labor can make it way down to the cure and working in the steel mills. Those I talked to said they work 10 or 12 hours a day in the scorching heap, with only a few breaks throughout the day. But it pays better than farming, so I've been told, and besides, we care and like the heat anyways. It's a rough start for many of these workers, but I feel like giving up time and hard work. This will all pay off for them like it will for the rest of us. We just have to believe in the future together that we're all building. I believe in that future, and in the Matrix Superior, and in the Concord's blessing. To some extent, I believe in Fickle Kern and his compatriots, too. We just have to work together to make the best use of the blessings Kira has been given, and we can shape our future into everything we want it to be. And I'm going to do everything to make sure it happens. So, uh, I don't know why that music's not playing in the background. This is weird. So, can we, like, start and begin? Yes? No? Request your war? Well, that's weird. I'm going to fix that off screen. But let's read about another one before we do that. Mm, I think I read this one last time. So if you read about this one, Averted Manufactories, please go ahead because we need those civvies. More construction speed would be nice. We're still getting 0.68 political power. Weekly uh, stability is going up too. And at this point, oh yeah, I read a good in consolidation too. If you're going to read this one too, please go right ahead. And we're going to have to do. The Riverine Economy, the Great Miller Fluve, is the lifeblood of the creative Kerenity. As vast waterways connect distant towns and cities while providing fertile grounds for farmland in between. And investing in the local economy that has grown around the river will make strength of our nation that much stronger, allowing us to create a booming business growth in our heartlands. <clears throat> and that fuels growth throughout the realm. Verdant and Bloom, there's another issue I want to talk to you about. Autumn Blaze looked up from her tea at Fickle Current. A small frown curling her lips as she met Fickle Current's eyes. A small business Karen always wore a suit, and today was no different. But even the heat outdoors, it made him look intelligent and sharp, but also marked him as an outsider, some Kirim, who hadn't lived in the realm during the silence. Instead, thriving in Grafoni until the time was right to return to the home of his grandparents. Every time he said something, Autumn had to remind herself that the two of them might as well be different species. The only thing they had in common was the race, and their hopes were bringing the realm out of the dark century of the silence, even though that, in that they differed. <clears throat> These rising fire heretics, they're growing. More powerful and verdant, Con current continued, unaware or simply indifferent but about Autumn's frown. Communalists who think that the silence was a beneficial realignment of Kieran society and that our treasured way of fire has failed us. They're even starting or started attracting Marxists and Stalinists to the numbers. You know what the, uh, those are, correct? A violent revolutionary ideology that thrives in toppling monarchy and castrating the beneficial ventures of capitalism? In some opinions, yes, Autumn Demure, but I believe in the Grand Galpon word. We can incorporate every Kieran's ideas into rebuilding our nation. Cooperation makes us stronger, and division makes us weaker. They must be stopped, and they must be crushed now before it's too late, Current urged her. Use the power of your position officially to denounce and disperse this filthy corner of our society, do it now, before the heresy grows and our matrix appears as the next monarch to be overthrown. I believe in the Grand Galpon, where how can we gallop on if we leave Kieran behind? The risk of uh, rising fire her heretics joining forces with Marxists is too great. Well, we've already done this once. Might as well do it again, I guess, you know. Weekly change is going down, unfortunately, right now, but we are doing 
uh, bureaucratic bottleneck to help our political power. Well, to hurt our political power. We get more harmony support, which is okay. Get more stability. So, um, overall, not too bad. I want more stability in the end. River iron economy, and then what? We have 32 factories. Industrialize a breadbasket, maybe, perhaps? Yeah, we get two more civvies. We gotta do that one. The farmland between the branches of the Great Miller Flute River is the most fertile land in the fertile in the land. With the benefits of modern farming techniques and tools, it alone could produce enough food to feed every kiln in the nation three square meals a day. Investment of the bread basket will strengthen the nation as a whole for years to come and ensure that no kiln goes hungry ever again. This would also be very good because we gotta move modify agrarian society. Ooh. Yeah. Build more railways, I like that. And get some political power too, which we could obviously use right now. Um so there's that. And we have to do carry on the world stage. The tale of two scripts. Coin counter paced back and forth outside the Matrix Peter Rain Shine study, trying her best not to show her anxiety or break out in a nervous sweat at her impeding meeting with Kira's absolute theocratic leader. She never met the Matriarch before, nor so much as seen her in person outside of anything resembling an official function of the state, and here she was about to spend 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes in conversation with her, one-on-one -on -one about a matter of absolute economic priority. She was terrified that she'd completely forget what she needed to say and then stared at the Matriarch, dumbfounded, like a deer after the invention of artificial lights. Taking a deep breath, she set her folder down on a nearby table and began to leaf through its contents to remind herself of what she needed to say. And Fragrance and Rhapsody, the returning population had become so entrenched in their ways that she had established a de facto parallel authority to the imperial administration that consisted entirely of their most respected and wealthy business kiln, intellectuals, artists, and other high-profile figures. That was a political problem all on its own, but the economic problem at the route of it came from these, two fig these figures' desire to use their own paper money over the Karen tail. A gold coin that had been around since the creation of the realm, the diaspora's paper money was based on the Sicy Trading House's banknotes, which they called scripts and were backed up by the massive stocks of silver and gold Sicy possessed in Griffonia, which they were slowly but surely moving back to Caria. The scripts were far more popular and stronger than the Karen tail in the northern cities, and were undoubtedly responsible for strong economic growth and investment among the returning diaspora, but undermined and devoured the tale the more it circulated, and now Coin cannot explain the situation of Matriarch and ask for her opinion what should be do what should be the official currency of Kyria. The money was, after all, minted and circulated under her divine authority. That left Coin Counter with a tough pitch to sell. Should she try to convince Rainshine to disallow the use of diaspora script, strengthening the Kiran tale and reasserting Vermilion's dominance over the north, but slowing its economic growth, or should the, she convince the matriarch to accept the script as acceptable currency along with the tail, even at the risk of devaluing the official currency further to encourage growth of the north even more? One nation, one currency. The tail will be the only coin accepted in, in Kyria. So I see scripts are growing our economy. We cannot delegitimize them for pride. Oh, we'll take that political power. You bet we're going to take that. We're ready for this mid autumn festival, but we got other things to do. 62 is still not bad. Honestly, we're going to go 62 right now. We can do all sorts of stuff, like Kirin Warfare Research Scheme. From the silence of lifted ancient texts on the nature of warfare as well as Kirin's lengthy and knowledge of its own struggles, coupled with the advent of the 11th century tactics and ideas from around the world, our finest strategists will adopt the practice of war games to determine what a Kirin soldier can do in these new days. Valiant Research Scheme. Taking on values of discipline and self-mastery, valiants are elite warrior monks who utilize their near forms without losing themselves in feral wrath. They, too, must not be left behind in the wake of the future when the soldiers they fight will carry not blades but bullets. Treating our valiants in these new ways would bless our winds of battle with the dreadful blades against our foes. Infantry Support Research Schemes. Before a Kieran can fight the enemy, they should take care of many things before hoof. How will the battlefield be reached? Where is the enemy? And how strong are they? How will the Kieran's supplies and reinforcements be carried to them and how fast? These and more must be tackled, though the idea of support companies is gaining much traction. Artillery Research Schemes. The Kieran's had affinity for black and uh, firepower, tending to, to their love for explosions and civilian fireworks. Thus, when they learned it was what essentially were glorified rifles, the size of entire houses, various organizations and guides put forth plans of fashioning artillery by the countries with the expertise of pyrotechnics. This has been ignored in the silence, but with a three and a half year plan underway. It's time to let them present their ideas to the military and see what will become of our own modern day cannons. A special forces research scheme. From before Kira's unification sprawl, legends of Kirin warriors who can fend off a thousand foes with a single sword an hours long New York State or their own bare hooves. But what have they become a reality for today? And in enough numbers to bolster dozens of regiments. Mustering those special forces units for Kiria will, on top of granting our army flexibility and unusual capabilities, surely spawn proud living tales of heroism. Yeah, we have two things here to do. And we're going to do Kira on the world stage, maybe. Uh, we need, well, this will give us industrializing society, which we do need here, so. The trans Kira Railway. If Kira's become united and modern, the way, uh, then a way of bringing people and goods from one side of the nation to the other is essential. While the Great Meadowfloof has long served as a crucial highway for our realm, it cannot reach everywhere. The construction of modern standardized railways throughout the realm will bring our people together like never before. As much as I want, oh, we have to do this one, too. We have to do all three of these, and then at least one more. At least whatever we get for, uh, yeah, hmm. 
Hmm. Is that petitioners? Well, it's still going out, which is good. Reply to letters. Even more weekly stability. That'd be pretty nice, not gonna lie. Because right now we're at 0.69. Uh, we definitely need a recommission of the Rhapsody Arsenal. The Rhapsody Arsenal was once a forefront of Kieran weapons invention and gained fame across Eastern Zebra for the quality of the cannons they manufactured. But for a century now, the Arsenal's been closed and abandoned. Instead of reopening the Rhapsody Arsenal and combining the inventions of the modern era with the ingenuity of the Kieran that once made it so renowned. Which would be great. From the wonders of modern technology are truly a blessing from Concord. Where we once roamed from town to town and village to village by hoof, the advent of modern transportation in the form of the railroad has greatly aided us in spreading the beliefs of the rising fire to take to the uh, Kieran of the realm. We can visit several towns in a day, whereas before we could only visit one town in several days, stopping at inns or farms along the road and speaking to only a hoof full of Kieran before moving on. With such an efficient vector for proselytization of the railroad, the rising fire is spreading faster than ever, and more and more Kieran or more and more towns are finding their truth in their teachings. That this is truly one of the greatest boons our uh, movement has ever seen, and proves that modernization and the rising fire are made for each other. When night falls and days tray lacking or track laying has ceased, miniature shanty towns spring up at the end of the line. They're popular by an entire new class of Kieran who are more eager to embrace a rising fire on any given day. I speak to track layers, coal miners, and mechanics, and every prosti even prostitutes who populate these transient rail side camps. Many are pleased to have a job free of dual monotony of farming and fishing, but they also feel inadequately rewarded for the services they provide by the foreign business gear to employ them. The work they do is backbreaking and dangerous, and yet they barely earn more than farmers and fishers do for their labors. The white fire does not care for them, and would rather that they not exist at all. As the traditional mystics and priests are wary of the new developments happening in the realm, but the rising fire supports them. They provide important labor for the communities, and in the eyes of Concord, they are favored by the, her divine blessing. Under our teachings and guidance, they are helping to build communities that will appreciate their work and reward them aptly, amply. We'll do what the leaders of the realm will not do. Acknowledge them, recognize their troubles, and treat them as equals. Such is Concord's will, and such is my purpose on this earth. As her faithful servant, I will not rest until her will is fully realized. And we'll get sword next. Because we have to have at least 40. Mm, yeah, that's fine. Here on the world stage, we have come in far in reforms, and the world is beginning to take notice. It's time to invite delegations from all across the world of Vermilion to witness not only our traditional culture, but the advances we have made. This isn't fun games, however. Kira needs help to move into the modern era and make a good impression on our foreign peers will make them more likely to lend us aid. Should be great. 95 is not bad. What else do we get here? Restore Northern Railways. Railroads will help us ship resources from natural deposits to factories where they can be exported or turned into finished goods. <clears throat> and bring goods and Kieran back into the hinterlands to further their development. The creation of railroads, crisscrossing our great realm, will bring Kira together like never before. Now, as much as I want to do all this stuff, uh, I'm going to continue doing the roads. Let's do Western Roads. Because I do want to keep in mind how much we're going to need for the festival. The Autumn Festival. Quite happy night. Because it's just worth doing. It's always worth doing. Good. This will be done. We need two more. We need four more in total after that. Because these give you none of that. But tea time with the Divine. Let's get some car armored cars and whatnot, but still. Autumn Blaze took another sip from her tea. Watching his rain shine did the same across from her. That's funny how life was sometimes. Here she was, sharing tea with the matriarch superior of Kira, and making out of conversation with friends. She knew that Kieran sitting across from her was a divine being to which she should show respect and devotion, but she had grown so comfortable in the matriarch's presence that she saw her friend she could speak freely with, as if she was a friend she could speak freely with, like any other Kieran. Of course, given the situation in Kyria, the world of politics could not be escaped forever. Fickle Current approached me with a request today that the Matriarch began, he is growing concerned with the movement that calls themselves the Incendiaries. Have you heard of them? They have a substantial base among the peasant farmers, and they gave them an outlet to channel the frustration against modernization into. The farmers fear losing their land for infrastructure and urban projects, and instead believe in land justice, collective ownership of the land, and a resurgence of religion in our way of life. They even start attacking and damaging new projects that are being constructed and Kieran building them. I heard about the attack on the dam near Chrysanthemum, and the granary fire at Cord Silk, uh, Autumn said, but truth be told, I have so much going on that I haven't been able to give it proper attention. I think I read that they're loosely affiliated with the rising fire, at least the very least. They're certainly friendly enough that the sect of our religion. If they're being organized, let that that poses, poses a big problem for us. Even still, I'm sympathetic to their plight, a range said. says. She said, as she added, I spent 60 years of my life isolated in Vermilion, oblivious to the suffering of my subjects, and now they're being thrust into a brave, brand new world just as quickly as I have. They're scared and confused, and I don't want them to be hurt because they're afraid. At a moment's pause, she pursed her lips and looked away. I want you to learn more about the situation and recommend a course of action from here. Find me a solution that is best for everyone, Kieran, and I'll make it so. Of course, Major. So, what do we got here? Investigate the incendiaries. 
the Sindhi is a group of Kiran peasants and farmers who are specifically affiliated with the rising fire heresy of our religion. And they have decided to express their frustration and disillusionment with the Grand Gallop onward by striking out at our modernization projects. They must be dealt with one way or another unless their movement spiral out of control and further hamper our efforts to modernize our countryside. Crap. So, we need to investigate the incendiaries. Where are they? Ah. Matriarch Superior, Rain Shine, uh, wants us to investigate the incendiaries before we decide how to best to deal with them. I uh, report on their activities in the realm, we compile and deliver to the Imperial Premier so she can bring forth a recommendation to the Rain Shine. Well, let's see what happens, because that still has 100 political power, and we have 9. And we only get like 0.5 a day now. Really 0.6, but still, that's not a huge difference. Alright, so we got plenty of this stuff here. Uh, more guns, probably, and then more artillery, probably, too. Pneumatic tools are very nice. Keep going with some of this stuff for some special. Oh, yeah, we definitely need that, too. We have 37, which is not bad, which is actually very, quite good. We lose a tiny bit more stability, get more factory output, two more civvies, and we'll do this one, and we'll do that one. Right next right, uh, industrialization. We need, actually, quite a few more factories. Dialectic dialects. Sometimes those days like this reminded Autumn Blaze of just how little she understood about Kyria. Despite being its imperial premier, she had always known that the realm of the large nation home to many diverse Kyrian cultural groups, but never before she faced a problem of having to use a translator to speak to Kyrian who lived under her jurisdiction. But as a group of Kyrian from Verdun brought a petition all the way up to the morning secretary for them to resolve, Autumn felt like she was beginning to grasp just how monumental a challenge kept keeping the nation together during the Grand Gallop onward would be. After sorting out some confusion with the translator, and with the assistance of members from the Secretariat who hailed from Verdant, the issue hoof became much clearer. Verdant, diverse as it was, had its own dialect of the Kieran language to the point where it was difficult for Autumn, who was from Mascot, to understand what they were saying. While the language of the majority of the realm spoke in the dialect Verdant spoke used the same script, their pronunciation, grammar, and vernacular were extremely different. But the crux of the issue rested on what Fickle Kurt and his NAKP party had been attempting to do in the city. The NAKP had begun to offer language classes in Verdant to help the local populace learn how to speak the Vermilion dialect of Kurish, which had angered the local leaders in Verdant, especially the mystics of the Rising Fire, who felt that they were being scored for a supposed backwardness by the bourgeoisie colonizers from the north. Their demands were quite simple. That the NAKP lead the city in a cease attempting to teach Vermilion Kirish in Verdun schools and tea houses, and let Verdun proudly embrace its cultural heritage instead of letting it be erased by the influence of the North. When the when their demands triggered outrage from the NAKP members see in the morning secretariat, who claimed it was at the right of the NAKP to conduct these educational ventures and to promote patriotism for the realm as a whole, Autumn quickly realized that it would come down to her and her supporters to decide whether to accept the petitioner's plea or not. The heritage is important and must be protected. One culture, one heritage, we will make the realm great again. We need that political power. Reiki in the centers. Senator Glow stepped into Autumn Blaze's office at the premier summons, and she immediately fell on the seat in front of Autumn's desk and sat down in it. I put together everything I could find on the incendiaries for you, she said, placing a binder down on Autumn's desk. Want me to give you the quick briefing, or would you rather read it for yourself? I trust you'll get your point across, Autumn said, pulling the binder over towards herself. I mean, that's why I hired you in the first place, right? All right. Senator Glow agreed, and she took a breath before starting. Well, it appears that the incendiaries are supported by the Rising Fire, which I don't think should become as much of a surprise at any rate. The Rising Fire has been heavily involved in supporting the anti-modernism of the peasant farmers and using their heretic priests to encourage farmers to join the incendiaries is a logical next step. The pushing for a full-blown revolution to punish the northern capitalists and the imperial administration of Vermilion for trying to cram the modernization of the Grand Gallop onward down their throats. Once they tear down Vermilion's authority, they want to create a communalist harmony over Kyria. Of course, they see Matriarch Rainshine as a hapless figure, entangled with their own agendas, otherwise they wouldn't claim any sort of divine legitimacy to keep their movement together. But the goals are very anti-matriarch, to say the least. I see, Autumn said, nodding along. In that case, I think it's best we get rid of, get the Reform Bureau involved. We can have it take action against the rising fire radicals in the plenum for a start and start to address the grievances that are driving farmers into the incendiaries movement. But that'll only be treating the symptoms, which is all we can hope for. The Grand Gallop onward itself is the root of all, root, root cause of all this. And as much as I want to help every Kieran, we can't abandon it for a few disgruntled farmers. Once it com uh, completes, the farmers will thank us for everything we did for them. I guarantee you. The success of the Grand Gallop onward will deal with any, any lingering tensions. Yay, communism goes down. Good. Well, I'm glad we got that 100 political power. You never know when you might get some. So, completed. Autumn Blaze bowed as a formality when the rain shines attendant led her into the matriarch's <clears throat> reading room normally. Such a meeting. Uh, a greeting wasn't necessary between the two friends, but when another Kieran were around, it wouldn't do, act, wouldn't do to act disrespectfully to the country's divine matriarch superior. Autumn had at least learned enough about politics to realize that a slip-up as small as that would get her rivals an opening to try and take her down to the next gathering of the plenum. But when Rainshine dismissed the attendant and the two Kieran were all alone, uh, Autumn smiled and joined Rainshine by her side on the floor. 
I've spent some time looking further into the incendiary's matter, she said, and she placed a folder full of papers before the matriarch. And I mean, whew, these Kieran are surely going crazy. They're not really a huge problem right now, but if we let them grow out of control, this incendiary situation is going to grow into an inferno. So the way I see it, you can either strongly condemn the incendiaries in the movement, or express sympathy and take, ask him to cooperate so that we can actually get to the root of our problems and help him out. I see, Rachel, I noted. But then she frowned, and why would I not simply choose a sympathetic route? They are still my subjects, despite their lashing out. Because, well, frankly, Matriarch, there's a chance they won't listen to you, Autumn said. Anxious to be rubbing your hooves together, you're our divine Matriarch, superior all the, by all rights and blessings of Concord, which means your word is her will as well. Uh, and Kira should listen to you immediately, but the seniors might still be too mad uh, to, at the state and the government to listen to you. And if Kira and the countryside are ignoring your divine voices, then that undermines your authority to a considerable degree. She sighed and shook her head. As much as I hate to admit it, I think that the condemnation is a safer option. You may call it upon all faithful Kira until your land to report on the incendiary activity, and aid the authorities in cracking down on the movement. That way you don't, you're don't you appealing to Kira who already respect you, rather than those who don't. Listen to what you have to say, so you don't have to worry about losing face with them, but you're going to make the incendiaries a lot angrier if you condemn their movement. Then she bitterly chuckled and added, Oh, forgive me if I say that, Rain Shine, but I am so glad I'm not our matriarch superior right now. I'm not the one who has to make the decree. I must condemn the incendiaries and their movement. Sympathize with the plight of the incendiaries and ask them to cooperate. The seeds of greatness. Is something wrong, Premier? You've barely touched your tea, Fickle Current raised an eyebrow as Autumn Blaze held her teacup in her magic, staring at not really drinking her oolong. If something has come out that is bothering you, speak freely. You should consider you shoulder a great deal of responsibility. As Premier, yet you do not have to tackle everything alone. Autumn sighed and set her teacup down. Kira's about to fall into famine, she said with a dour tone. Fragrance and rhapsody have urbanized so rapidly without uh, returning diaspora that they're draining of granaries and warehouses months faster than originally planned. Our population is beginning to boom, while fewer Kieran work the fields now than they did in the silence. Agricultural output isn't keeping up, and unless this year's harvest doubles last year's, Kieran will starve come winter. We need to modernize our farming techniques alongside our society, Kurt swiftly concluded. Neither you nor I are farmers, but I did learn a lot of new techniques being developed in Crifonia before I left. One of the more interesting ones was close planting. Triple the density of seedlings in a plot, then double it once the first batch has come to settle in the soil. The thought is that the plants of the same species won't compete against each other, returning greater yields from smaller plots of lamb. Alongside that, we can try to deep plowing the fields. The soil at the top of the earth is what crops use up year after year, and <clears throat> draining it of fertility until it becomes barren dust, but plow deeper and more fertile, untouched soil may be found. That would ensure healthier, healthy yields for our farmers. Autumn chewed on her lip as she tried to determine if what Kermit was actually saying was actually making sense. Do you have any evidence that that worked in Griffonia? We're not farmers, so we can't afford to act on something without proof that it will work. Correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't the first planting season start soon when Autumn Nadi continued? The Warren Secretary is slow. Dreadfully so. I appreciate the merits in sussing out the finer details of the proposals that cross its floor, but it sounds like we don't have the time to wait on them. If we're going to adopt these techniques, a decision needs to be made now before the farmers start planting. At any rate, the Sorghum Foundry owns large plots of farmland in peace and plenty. I can commandeer the farms to test the techniques for you before the second planting season. Like, excellent testing site. We're going to need all of our farms to feed our people. We can't risk testing new techniques. No, because I did that last time I remember. And didn't go so well for us. So how much do we get right now? 0.84. That's not bad. Uh, we only need, well, we do need 70 here. So I want to wait to get that one done first. You never know if we need this extra political power, so. We have 39. We need two more. Where do we get two more military factories? Banner guns. Uh... Actually, what's the cheapest factory to make? Because we're making one right now. It'll be done in May. Eight, ten, eight. Uh, we're going to make two really fast here. We need to make these two. March 30th? Yeah. yeah that's what we're going to have to do. Um, I guess we could probably try to get to early mobilization. But it doesn't mean... We're, well, I guess we, built, we will build things faster. Yeah. doesn't mean we build anything faster, though. Are we doing construction speed at least? No? God dang it. Consumer goods factories are still nice. In the Garden of Tranquil Florences. Autumn Blaze again touched a piece of paper that rolled up and hidden inside one of the pockets of her vermilion and golden robes as she observed the festivities in the Garden of Tranquil Florescence. It had been her masterpiece as of her time as premier for so far, sprawling in lively festival to welcome Kyria back into the modern world by inviting delegations from all across the world to witness the resurgence of Kieran culture with the end of the silence. Delegations from Equestria, Aquilia, Wingbody, and the Griffonian Empire were all present, along with envoys from many other nations, all bedazzled by the specters of of uh, Kieran folk songs and dances, pyrotechnics, gymnastics, the military drilling of the elite Kieran banners, and of course, seemingly endless Kieran cuisine. The past few days had all been an effort to butter up the delegates and please them before giving her speech, in which she would politely ask for assistance from foreign nations of modern ethnic realm. Modernizing a nation as large and desperate as Kieran within a few years would be impossible without outside help after all. Hopefully, the foreign envoys would be able to secure favorable terms with their governments if they left Kieran pleased and amazed with what they saw. 
but as Autumn prepared to give the speech, she still found herself wrestling without a request for an aid. For Inter Frost, and the traditionalists had pressured her to take a more moderate approach to advocate for the righteousness of the way of fire and its tenet of living in harmony with the nature, rather than conquering it. Fickelkern, however, had urged her to find, found her request on Kira's abundance of natural resources, simply waiting for foreign capital to be exploited and traded around the world. It left Autumn in an uncomfortable position, should she ask for help based on good faith and favors, or exchange the resources of her home for the money of foreigners. Plus, in foreign age, for foreign aid in exchange for favors and Concord's blessing. You get more stability, too. Limited exports, huh? You get more construction speed, too. Natural resources as a bargaining chip to bring them to the table. Close economy with free trade. This radically opens up everything else. Uh, I'm going to go with the political power for this one. <clears throat> so that should actually help out with how fast we build this, right? Four more days. Faster. That's good. Oh, this much political power. What are we going to do next? Holy cow. We can actually choose things here, huh? This is weird. Research center. Morale. Point three, point three. Division speed. Attack. I like that. Free trade's going to help us out, though. Fuel game for oil, refinery. We could go straight to partial mode. And extend the Hyacinth Accord. The Hyacinth Accord was an important first deal with a foreign nation after a century of isolation and stagnation. A question of support in providing the foundation for modernization efforts has been invaluable, but now, with the modernization efforts well underway, we must decide whether to continue the question of support or forward during own free path. Path 3 of any strings tying us to a foreign economy. Well, it is a question you're doing. What's going on all, all over the world here? Well, they're all right. Let's see what happens. Of course, we just we should just save some of our political power, but still, whatever. We'll get the political power back. Hello, I forgot about this. Uh, guns are nice. Blueprints. Honestly, I'll do the new standard army. It's difficult to create a modern army from scratch, but we'll have to try regardless. Standardizing army doctrine and training regi regiments, laying out the benefits in terms of service, and acquiring foreign weapons and surplus equipment will go a long way in providing the basis to build a new standing army upon it. Altering the deal. Autumn Blaze cringed as she finished her plea to the plenum, only to be drowned out by a chorus of unhappy voices. She had taken to the stand uh, to ask for the plenum support in extending the highest of the courts of the quest a deal that had been very helpful in funding the three and a half year plan to so far, but was deeply unpopular with both fickle currents and winter frost cliques. Now, after arguing that a renewal of the courts would give Kira more funding and more resources to have successfully finish a plan, she found herself met with nothing short of a revolt by the other two parties in the plenum. You give a question a greater share of her resources, a greater control of her nation's wealth, a greater influence of the lives of every Kira in this country. Fickle current asks her, our material wealth is precious to us, and when a nation has nothing left that at least has the resources within its own lands, will not be turned into beggars at the question table, I will not stand for it. And neither will I, Winter Frost cut in, we are a nation supported by the strength of our faith in the concord and the way of fire. What we are lacking is not material tools, but faith. The equestrians do not worship concord, they do not believe in the way of fire. How are we supposed to create a righteous nation? If we stray from the divine will of our goddess to do so. We are not sacrificing anything, uh, Autumn protested. We are exchanging something we have plenty of for we have little of. The questions are honest, forthcoming, and reasonable. The Reform Bureau has already made great progress on the preliminary talks. The terms of questions offer us are generous and honest. They favor us more than they favor them. Do not turn your back on the help that we need because we are too proud to take it. But Otto Blaze could do nothing now. She could tell that the Kieran and the Plenum had already made up their minds. As delegates left their seats to cast their votes and a scribe tallied them up, Otto could only nod her hooves and worry that, and hope that she had been persuasive enough to sell the deal. Votes to protect her sovereignty. Further aid. We're going to more aid. Oh, also, I'm going to do this too. So, we're going to make one here. That's going to take 28th, 16th. That's not bad overall. But we're going to rush through this one and start working on this one, August. And, or actually, we could do this too. So, by May, we'll be done with the plan, hopefully. So, we're working on two at the same time. And that'll give us. Oh, we're above there. Hold on. New standard army. Hey, breakdown and industrialization. Did I read this one? Rapid industrial industrialization of the realm. At a rate never before seen anywhere else in the world, it has come with its own host of challenges. One of the most critical of these is the need for skilled and unskilled labor, and we've gone to great lengths to obtain workers for modern society. But bringing so many care into one place to work for the gears of capitalism comes at the risk of radical leftist ideas spreading around. Ooh. As long as we don't go below 41. We're owned from occupation. Systemize arithmetic TC. Algorithmic, algorithmic forecasting. Yeah. Still building up infrastructure, which is still pretty good for us. 
Well, in the Motor Bureau. Uh, the days of marching an army from one end of the nation to the other is over. A truly modern army can move its troops to where they need to go to using motorized equipment. Fickle Kern has offered to use his funds to procure Griffonian trucks and establish a motor bureau that will aid in the research and producing new trucks to allow our army to modernize and banditry in the West. The so Putnam now gives the floor to Governor Amber Grain of the auspicious Clouds Province. Autumn Blaze watches the governor made her way to the center of the Plenum's chamber to speak. The mayor must have been in her late sixties, but she carried herself with a fire and a brimstone air about her that made her seem imposing and youthful despite her age. And she wasted no time launching into the reason why she had requested this audience with the Plenum in the first place. My province is in chaos and lawlessness, she snapped, harsh eyes sweeping over the assembled delegates as if they were axes in the care and retreat. Bandits are emerging from the countryside to prey on our new flows of trades and commerce and we were which were dead for so long they attacked Kieran on the roads in broad daylight because they know no Kieran will stop them. Where's the Vermilion Banner army? Where are my soldiers? Things are too out of hoot for my constabulary to handle on its own. My province, as well as the rest of the western provinces, need direct action from the army yesterday. The Grand Gallop onwards should be modernizing countryside and providing Kieran with better jobs and more opportunities than ever before, Fickle Kern encountered. The only reason there would be a bandit problem would be because of the misuse of the funds and aid the plenum has sent to the provinces. Amber Grant scouted him. You were born wearing that suit, weren't you? She snapped at him. If you spent one single day of your life toiling in the fields or working in the, one of these death traps we call factories, you'd understand why Kieran are tuning to banditry. All these companies buying up and reshuffling farmlands, displacing farmers off of the land their families have worked for generations, and half of them won't even go into the cities to work in factories when they see the maimed and mutilated begging for tails in the streets because they lost hooves or horns on the jobs. And the four mayors there are, work their labor to the bone for a little more than a tail an hour with no protections and no rights. What else is a Karen to do without skills but turn to banditry? So until you fix that up, the West needs soldiers if we're going to deal with the bandit problem. We have to secure the Western, with Western bandits if we want the Grand Gallop onward to be successful. But we just do this one first. Bourgeoisie and the proletariat. The picket lines had already been erected around the factory by the time Fickle Current's automobile pulled up in front of it, with dozens of Kieran workers standing behind him. They held signs and chanted slogans, and one of them had gathered a sizable pile of rocks that could easily turn, against, turn into missiles at a moment's notice. Though soot and smog hung in the fragrance air, the factory behind it was unmistakably silent, the gears of modernity ground to halt by the striking workers. Current frown is simply out of the car, moving along behind the cordon of private detectives and security staff that assembled to face the striking workers. He found Cypress Snow watching from a vantage point, a similarly displeased look on his face. The two nodded at each other in greeting, and both, and both turned their attention to the striking workers. They don't have any rising fire priests with them, Fickle noted. It's not just a communalist heretics this time, Cypress said, shaking his head. It's just some workers unionizing and sharing the subversive leftist literature. There are a few rabble rousers operating within the city who might have imported it from Stalingrad, Prywin, Scandinavia. Not that where it came from really matters. What matters is that these ideas are spreading the city and filling their heads with nonsense. Then it looks like the Rising Fire has a modern a competitor, and we have a nuisance to deal with. The sight of the protesting workers and the sounds of their chants took current back to his days in Skyfall where he'd seen similar unrest play out before. We know the playbook then. This is nothing we haven't dealt with this in Skyfall. Right. We're bringing scabs from someplace where we're tell them they're getting good playing jobs, which will let the factory get cheap replacement for the strikers. Then we kick the squatters out and crack some skulls if we have to. The company's pockets are deep enough to get some mercs together for a raid. Maybe Cypress will be willing to part with some of his marines for a bit. Cypress and turn to fickle and frown, but we have to get control of this now and stamp the movement out of the resource before it gets worse. Stamp it out of the source before it gets worse. We know how this goes because we've seen it before. We'll have to be proactive here, find whatever subversive is stirring up the workforce, and deal with them, and the last thing we need is to lose fragrance to the proles. Radical Marxists will never have a home in fragrance. Bandits have long been a problem in more rural and unsettled lands in the west of a realm, but throughout the period of modernization they have grown ever more troublesome. Caravans and convoys bring much new supplies and goods to the west are frequently attacked by bandits, and simply must do something about them before they jeopardize our ongoing modernization efforts and the backwaters of the realm. How are we supposed to complete all this then? What do we need to do to complete the three-year plan? The ending of the silence focus has been completed. We need to complete every single one. We have to have half a year in June? Is that really right? That'd be way too... Oh, you can't complete this then. Hmm, I don't like that at all. Recall rearmament group. Your summon the banners was a start, but there are only too few Kieran who have answered the call to form a functional mo modern military. We must start by organizing limited conscription and drafting peasants and com commoners uh, to create regional militias that with proper training may one day join the banners and provide the backbone for a modern army. Well, hopefully we'll get through it, but we'll see. Kieran Raffle Designs. Our species is blessed by the Concord in that every individual can use basic telekinesis to manipulate objects and hold weapons. We can use this gift that we've been blessed with to create weapons ideal for our species that only we can use, rather than relying on the designs of other nations. If we want to create a functional modern army, then we need guns made here at home, then we need a lot of them. You know, I'm okay with this. We can lose slightly more weekly stability. More and more political power. Radically more political power. That's well, maybe not that radical. Vanguards of a new age. The Kieran vanguards have the best of our best soldiers. Lightly armed armored, they fought as deadly skirmishers at the front of our armies, whittling down the enemy and threatening their flanks while the main host moved in to engage. With the age of gunpowder and mechanized warfare, we need to adapt our vanguards to incorporate modern hit-and-run 
Fit and Gallop tactics into their arsenal. Which we're already about in the, uh, the motor bureau, which would be good. Uh, doctrinal modernization. Modern wars are not followed with infantry formations, pitched battles, and sheer force of will. Modern wars are only are won by well-planned and coordinated actions, defined by the military's doctrine. That dictates how the army should act. Developing our land doctrines will be useful for modernizing our army and giving it the ability to fight effectively in the field. Pretty good. 102 days is good. <clears throat> the Massacot War School. Uh, the training grounds of Mascot were once the pride of our army, where thousands of soldiers could be trained in the art of war. The war school has been closed for a century now, and so no new students have been passed through its doors. To rebuild our army, we must op open the school and begin training the next generation of soldiers. The boys in life of Kyria. The horrific reek of sewage and pollution struck Autumn Blaze like a slap to the face as soon as she stepped out of the train car in Verdun's train station. Even a few hundred meters from the shoreline, the great Milliflues stank like rotten flesh fish and foul eggs. Cinder Glow gagged as she followed Autumn off the train and she quickly pinched her nose shut with a cleft hoof. That smells horrific, she shouted over the hiss and whistled the steam engine behind him. What well, crawled up Concord's divine rear and died. Oh god. This is terrible, Autumn said, wincing as she made her way to the train station under the, towards the river. Uh, sickly Kieran down the streets, leaving, uh, leaning against the walls and grimacing while others briskly trotted to where they needed to go. Nose was covered with cloth masks to cut the stench out as best they could. When the delegation from, from Vermilion arrived on the shores of the Great Millifluve, they found them covered with dead and rotting fish, the once blue waters of Kira's lifeblood is sickly green and black. To their horror, they saw a few Kieran in one of the island communes of the Verdant, dropping buckets into the poisoned water to bring back to their homes. It was a little wonder Verdant was so full of sickly and starving Kieran. The factories upstream are causing this, uh, Autumn said. I read reports that they were dumping industrial waste in the Millifluve, but I didn't imagine it was this bad. It's not just the factories either, Senator remarked. Farmers are dumping fertilizer in the fields and it's running off with the rain. The cities are exploding population. They don't have anything near robust enough sewage systems to deal with all the waste. And all that's getting dumped in the river, and it all flows downstream to Verdant. We have to step in and do something to stop this, Autumn decided. We can't let these Kieran languish like this. The pollution is killing them. And if we don't do something about it, it'll kill Verdant itself. If we don't save the lifeblood of Kira, then our nation will die. Yeah, pretty much. God dang it. Oh, wait, do we miss this? Bro. Come on. I forgot about it. Yeah, we have to go back and do that one. Uh, Winter Frost, we gotta be, talk about Winter Frost. Mascot School of War. Um, Experimental Armor Corps. The modern battlefield heavily features the use of bulletproof armored vehicles, which can create an unstoppable spearhead at the front of an offensive, or deliver a decisive counterattack to enemy breakthrough. While we currently lack the industry to create state of the art tanks, we can invest in light armored vehicles as a stopgap into our industrial capabilities to expand further. Even for this, I need an end date, like an end date of when we can actually like finish this. Because this is dumb. I, I, I hope we can finish this in time. The fragrant smell of chaos. Coal fire stood in the darkness of her bakery as the sounds of rioting and looting filled the streets outside. She couldn't see much past boards she nailed over the windows and door, but she knew the mob was getting closer. Soon they decided to turn their, fur, her, their fury on her bakery. And all she had to do was defend herself with a black powder pistol her grandfather owned. She was terrified of the thought she'd have to use it. She'd never killed any Kieran before. Could she do it if her life was on the line? It had been a few scary weeks in fragrance, especially for the bakers, uh, like herself. Grain supplies had collapsed with the famine in the countryside, and Coral didn't have enough flour to make bread for any Kieran any more than herself and her parents. Fragrance had just started importing food to combat the growing crisis, but that just made the prices on the food, staple rises, uh, food staples rise dramatically. Just to make ends meet, Coral had to raise the price of a loaf of bread from one tail to fifteen, and she already had to chase down a few Coral to try to steal from her when she wasn't looking. But despite all that, Coral had hoped she'd be able to get through the tough times until Fragrance solved its food issues. Their old leather scales died. Some Karen had beaten that amiable, grandfatherly bar to death on the street corner where he played the spike fiddle by day, and slept by night and looted his corpse of its valuables. A few days later, the authorities hang, hanged a cult from the tree across that road. From one of leather scales' corner, a street urchin from the countryside who they claimed was responsible for the murder. The response from the fragrance community of rural migrant workers experiencing the brunt of the food shortage and scapegoated for the city's growing ills had been explosive and furious. A mob quickly formed and started looting the granaries across the city, and once those were empty, turned their attention to the local bakeries. Until now, Coles had been spared their attention, given her time to prepare, but they were coming and it wouldn't be long before they tried to steal what bread she had left. Glass shattered across the street and Cole snatched her pistol and her magic, the weapon quivering in its red aura. Vermilion needed to do something to save fragrance from itself. It had to, only the matriarch could stop the growing violence of the swollen city, and if they were fast enough, maybe they could save Cole and their family as well. But nothing more dangerous than starving Kieran with nothing to lose, and the death knell banditry. It only taken five minutes for the last band to sell outside of Amaranth, Amaranth to collapse. The local constabulary, supported by a company of Vermilion banners, had surrounded the band, I hide up, and demanded the surrender of every Kieran inside. 
When the bandit leader insisted on fighting to the death, a single shot from a Mark Skirin ended her rule far quicker than it began, and her followers were shortly thereafter surrendered to the banners. Men eyed Canada watched with a small frown on her face as the bandits were led away from their encampment one by one, with banner soldiers guarding the column on either side. The bandits certainly didn't look like the vicious marauders they were in the stories, parents stole their foals, rather. They were poor and broken Kieran, many well into the Middle Ages, many more barely old enough to be considered adults. Some of them had foals clinging to their legs or backs, crying in fear as their parents were dragged away to do the way their fate. All of her hurt Candle's soul, and she could help but mention it when the company's commander tried to buy. They may be poor farmers just trying to feed their families, but their bandits, Candle, the officer said, shaking his head, desperation doesn't forgive the killing and stealing they've done. We should be helping them, not imprisoning them, Candle countered, and she touched her red and orange robes for emphasis. The rising fire wants to help all care into the land. If we work together to support one another, the farmers will have to turn to banditry to support their families. The way of fire only imposes order and treats the symptoms of unrest, but it does nothing to weed out the root causes. The officer just shook his head. I don't disagree with you, he began, but how far should we let an individual push her interests when it hurts so many more? If we are ever to move forward as a nation, we need to unify and deal with this problems at hoof. Maybe one day we'll be able to stop care from turning to a life of banditry, but all we can do now is play catch up and stop the ones who already have. He patted Ken on the shoulder and gave her a small nod. Go back to camp and ready a service for the troops, chaplain. I'm sure there'll be plenty more like you who want to know if they're, what they're doing is right in Concord's eyes. Today we kill Bennis, but tomorrow we may not have to. We may. The Scandinavian summer sweet, huh? It's different from, from what I'm used to. But we'll see. So uh, maybe I'm complaining too much about this. Because this does say um, that this, this needs to be done by the end of year 1011. We've got a year and a half, so. Uh, the, circus, the crisis of bread and rice. Our exploding population and the movement of Kieran away from the subsistence farmers filling the countryside into a reopening of cities has created a dire crisis in our food supply. Cities are emptying the granaries much faster than anticipated, and all farming techniques are insufficient in providing enough food to keep the cities from starving. We must find a solution to this crisis and encourage our fellow Kieran to give everything they can to afford to see us through this next dreadful winter. Sharing what little we have, it's there with a single car rumbling down the dirt road of the fragrance. That car, pulled by an elder Kieran who had seen dozens of seasons come and go, had been loaded to the brim with as much as weed as it could hold. And when he arrived in the famine stricken fragrance, he merely unhitched itself from the cart and wandered off, only returning to the cart once it was empty to take back to his farm. Day in, day out, the elder Kieran would make the trip to the city, giving away his one cart full of wheat to any Kieran who needed it. He became a hero to look Kieran when the car broke a wheel on the journey into town. The smith made him a new one for free as a sign of thanks. It wasn't long before the story of this humble farmer spread throughout the countryside. Shortly after, where there was one car, soon there were two, then five, then ten. More and more farmers gathered up everything they could spare and began making their journey to fragrance, delivering it to Kieran and Need for free. Within a month, the same started happening in other hungry cities in the realm. The poor peasant farmers, with barely enough land to feed their families, started to solve a crisis that the NAKP and large consortium farms could not, and in doing so began to knit their communities together. With food filling bellies once again, their tempers began to cool and Karen started seeing each other's friends once more, not as rival hungry mouths that would take their next meal away. Even Matriarch Spear Rainshine spoke herself to herself spoke to the nation of the movement in issuing an imperial decree to establish a National Farmers' Day as a holiday and thanks to the peasant farmers for saving the nation from famine by sharing what little they had. As for the farmers who started the movement, he simply returned to his farm without giving any Kieran's name, unwilling to be put in the national spotlight as a hero. In his own words, the one reporter that managed to track down his homestead, I just did what I thought was right. Kieran were hungry, and that's something I could spare. Simple as that. Sometimes it's the everyday heroes we can, who can save the day, not the big names in the government. Of course not. But we've still got a lot of stuff here to do, and we don't have the other one that, uh, that come up and went up. But we can get uh, training the Skyfall. Skyfall, despite its size, is an economic juggernaut through some investments and establishing lobbying operations there. We can reap many economic benefits. However, it won't come cheap, and Skyfall may not welcome our attempts at increasing re trade relations with them, too. Go we'll try it. Why not? Hey, accept. News from the great city of Skyfall. Our offers have been accepted. New wealth should be flowing into our nation soon. Nice. So we're not going to go build the dockyards as we originally intended, but it is what it is. Restore Northern Roads. Uh, go ahead. Uh, experimental Armored Core, Doctrine of Modernization. We got a lot of stuff to finish off here. A new standard or an old banner. Autumn Blaze would be the first Kieran to admit that she had no experience with the art of war, so she, she had tried to long put matters of warfare into the hooves of experience and study Kieran she could trust. But the newest dilemma on her desk was one that she had attended to personally as an imperial premier. With well, the modernization of the country and the dawning reality that the world of the realm had returned to was even more dangerous than the one that had cut ties with a century ago, Kieran was in desperate need of a modern, functional, and supplied army to protect its borders. Now left on, as its premier and effective head of government in dire need of a solution to bolster the banners that provide for Kieran's security throughout the process. Autumn tapped her pen to her lips as she tried to recall what she learned at her last meeting with the officers of the Vermilion Banner Army, and that was when an idea came to her. On the western border with the Zebra Natives and Griffin Colonizers existed many regional militias that had maintained their military traditions throughout the sounds to protect their lands from raids across the river. They were antiquated and fought with swords and updated battle tactics, but they were organized, well-trained, and had a strong identity as warrior Kieran. Better yet. 
When the news of the new Grand Gallop onward reached the western border, they immediately reaffirmed their oaths of loyalty to the Vermilion and made truck rain shine. There was a possibility in here to do something with them and bolster the army as a whole. Autumn snatched a sheet of paper off her desk and prepared to write down a proposal for Reform Bureau, but she hesitated before putting ink to the paper. These youths were hardly top of the line, but possessed in discipline, they lacked in uh, the equipment and modern doctrine. Would it be better to let them keep their organization as autonomous military units and adopt them into the Banner Army, or dissolve and disperse them to integrate them into growing banners as a whole? Keeping them together would please the martial families of the West, but also hurt the spread of the new ideas. But dispersing them into the army would also allow to be, them to be better trained and more effectively used, and the mixture of ideas throughout the realm would help dilute any biases of Western soldiers. The Rising Fire was very popular in the West, after all, and it could be a risky endeavor to let those beliefs grow unchecked. The Banner Army needs to be a bolster with existing units. We should dissolve these militias and train them in the way of modern warfare. Absolutely. Now we have vanguards of the new age. Today I return home to, for, to my mountain villages of Agat for some, uh, so much needed rest and reflection. The challenges of the plenum are numerous, compounded by the fact that the clarity of the matrix mind is confused and confounded by those who seek to trick her for their own gain. I am, of course, primarily talking about Fickle Current and its NAKP cronies, but I have complained about the stallion too much already. I would rather focus on more pleasant thoughts tonight. A gate has not changed much since the last time I visited, despite the impressive progress of the Grand Gallop onward and modernizing almost every facet of our lives. The monastery is still quiet as ever, with long periods of quiet, peaceful meditation in the gardens during the day accompanied by wind chimes and birdsong at night. The firework pop and sparkle with a, brand, with a rainbow of bright and beautiful colors in Concord's honor, illuminating the scone, stone square on the mountainside where we gather to sing her praise, but even here the passage of new decrees is plainly visible. Here and where but cults and fillers who had ascended to Vermilion in service of the Matriarch years ago are now grown mares and stallions, and many of them have answered Matriarch Rainshine's call for aspirant vanguards to join her in Vermilion. Before they would do so, however, they would first venture to the Noctulicent no Forest and the Borderlands for intense and uh, harrowing training. I've seen how much training hardens the heart and souls of many a Kirin before them, so I took it upon myself to honor these Kirin with Concord's blessing before they depart. As I rub the holy ashes across their head scales and across the stripes of their horns, I can only think back to when these brave souls were but full scampering across the monastery grounds. I'd known them all and had the honor of teaching them our holy tenets and Concord's divine guidance as they grew up. Stone Cleft had always been strong and clumsy, but had a tender, ten kind tenderness to his or tender kindness, to his heart that still left him with only friends and without enemies. Fire, lip, fire Whip was leith, uh, cunning and temperamental, but she always stood by those she trusted and respected, and I knew she would make an ex excellent vanguard. And then there's Dragonfly and Firefly, the inseparable pair of brother and sister who did everything together, from mischief to as little foes and proudly serving the matriarch. They and the others I bless today are some of the best and brightest Kieran I know, and though I worry for the hardships they will soon face, I know they will triumph over all of them and bring honor to the realm. As I ask or place the ashes on the last Kieran, I step back and ask them a single question. Who do you fight for? Without hesitation, they all answer that they fought for the Matrix appearing in Concord. Even though it was the answer I expected, it still left me deeply pleased and relieved to hear it. These Kieran will not be beholden into the self-serving interests of the fragrance, nor the squabbling plenum, nor the mourning secretariat and factional politics, and certainly not the heretics of the rising fire. They are loyal to Concord and the Matriarch first and foremost, and the temptation shall lead them away from the paths of righteousness and honor. They will charge in the battle carrying a hoof-written anthology of Concord's divine teachings and tenets, never forgetting that it is because of her glory and guidance that the realm was created, and in that I feel proud. They serve as an ever-important reminder that the work I do in Concord's name is important, and so long as my brothers and sisters in the faith similarly re remember our devotion to our goddess, we will be able to protect Kyria from the forces of unchained modernization that have threatened to destroy it. We're 50% nice. Fantastic. And now, I apologize for complaining about this earlier, but completion of the three and a half year plan. We have succeeded what many thought impossible. Matriarch's superior range on ambitious plans completed, or has become a reality, thanks to Premier Autumn Blaze's endless de dedication to the Grand Gallop onward. Because of their efforts, the 11th century will be a truly wonderful century for the realm of Kyria. We did it. We get all this stuff, we don't really need to. The conclusion. When the news reached Mascot that the Premier Autumn Blaze was scheduled to give a speech on radio that evening, word quickly spread to the small community of farmers on the city's borders that the Imperial Premier called her home. But the farmers were poor even if the modernization of the Grand Gallop on Red Order began improving their lives, and many, her parents especially, feared that they would not be able to hear it. But thanks to a friend of a friend of a friend, Autumn's parents managed to find a radio and the entire community gathered around the staticky device as it strained to pick up Autumn's voice from Vermilion, many kilometers away. Citizens of Kyria, Autumn proclaimed over the radio as soon as the broadcast began, Today is a great day, a monumentous day. The three and a half year plan, the first phase of the Grand Cup onward, has been a resounding success. When I first began working with her divinity, Matriarch Superior Rainshine, as her Imperial Premier, I was immediately intimidated by the sheer scale of the undertaking before us as a nation, but her success should not be surprised. Surprising. It took a gr group effort to make this work. Matriarch Rainshine, who believed in the Grand Gallop Onward, the all care plan for national revival, which put aside their differences to come together and create a new modern future for the realm, our friends overseas who lent us money and their expertise to catch up on a century of misinnovations, and most importantly you, the average Kieran, 
Sharon, the backbone and soul of our nation, responded to a rallying cries of modernization and helped in any and every little way you could. We could not be here tonight without you, and Concord, I'm sure, is smiling upon her favorite species. What we have accomplished here would make her proud, and her favor will bless Kieran for generations. Today is a day to rejoice, Kieran of the realm. Be together with your friends and family. Invite your neighbors over to drink a feast. Celebrate, and don't worry about getting a little carried away with your celebrations, as the matriarch has declared that tomorrow shall be a national holiday celebration. So to you, Kieran of Kiria, good night, and may Concord bless you. Music signaled the end of the broadcast, but the farmers of Mascot had only just begun to cheer and stomp their hooves. In the center of it all, Autumn's mother cried tears of joy and pride, held close against her husband's chest. It will be a n lively night in Mascot, and all throughout the realm as a whole. We did it, we did it, Congor bless us. Political power stability unlocked the radiant prosperity focus tree. We've cast off the last vestiges of the silence. Enable editing of Seafarer Banner Division template and training and dispensing of units belonging to it. Ban frickin' Pestic. Oh god, what is this? Declared triumph of modernization. It had been an arduous task, taking delicately at breakneck speeds, but against all odds, Akira stepped out of the silence with their heads held high. Having struck the perfect balance between the quest of techno industrialization and the dreams of every Kira from all, all bringings, we shall return to the world sages titans, accepting the ways of modernity under terms. Expect Conrad's power. Ah, yeah. Increases the maximum amount of resources that can be produced by civilian factories or synthetic refineries, at the same time by one, a mirrored factory. The temperate local climate of Vernal Glade and proximity, proximity to existing transport and logistics infrastructure makes it an ideal location for the construction of a modern processing plant producing mirin, a rice, wi rice wine used use widely in Kieran cooking. Ah, the success of the Imperial Premier Autumn Blaze's three and a half year plan has abolished the last vestiges of the silence in the realm, setting, setting Kira on a path to becoming a modernized industrial nation. The all Kira plenum for natural revivals matured from a shiftless gaggle of beckoning demagogues into a form of Kira's most capable states Kieran and scholar officials. United by common purpose to see the realm strong and prosperous, emerging from the silence to assert Kira's place on the world stage. The millennium is so young, and the plenum's lofty vision of an eastern zebraca united under the aegis of the ascended realm of Kira may well gain traction among the Kiran, galvanized by the nation's meteoric rise as the Grand Gallup armor progresses, and as the Reform Bureau, the Morning Secretariat, and the plenum all find themselves fonts of power in a rapidly centralizing nation-state, Kira's diverse array of ideological tendencies must cooperate and compromise to realize a dream of a strong and prosperous Kira. Ah. So what even is this song? Such as to do. Radiant Prosperity. The Grand Gallup Armor has succeeded against all odds. A premier autumn blaze has achieved in a few short years a century's worth of industrial and technological progress lost in silence. It's time to officially announce the beginnings of a new era of, uh, for New Kyria. The era of Radiant Prosperity. Oh god. Increased duration of modernization until March 8th. Oh, that's not terrible. Second, first. Autumnal Premiership. Hmm. Kyrian Consocialism. The party popularity for the parties will never fall below 50%. Oh, this one. Under a new constitution, the Imperial Premier will no longer govern at the Matriarch's pleasure. The new officer of the Premier of Kyria will be elected by the modern Morning Secretariat. <clears throat> After all our Imperial Premiership has endured, there's really only one merit for the job. A grand gallop onward. I still want to build all these roads and whatnot. We'll do two. On the steps of the Vermilion Palace, with the Matrix Pier of Kira by our side, Premier Autumn Blaze proudly proclaimed to the world that the realm of Kira had concluded its ambitious grand gallop onward and was ready to join the international community. Many thought that cramming a century's worth of technological and societal advancements in a three and a half years of modernization would be an impossible feat, but the Kiran have managed to achieve it, nevertheless. With new major power entering the stage in eastern Zebraca, many neighbors of the Kira are now left to wonder just what a research in Kira means for them and how they'll tip the global balance of power. With Concord's blessing, we succeeded. But I think we'll end it there. We've done very well. And I apologize for complaining earlier, like I said, but God, we actually did this right this time. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, though, please consider leaving a like. Oh, God. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow to see what else we can do as Kira. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.